Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be starting the landmark quiz 2020 in another three to four minutes. Good evening to all of you from Chennai, India. This is Dr. Naveen Jayakumar presenting the landmark quiz for 2020. Uh, this happens to be uh, the 73rd, 72nd landmark quiz. We have done 71 landmark quizzes so far since uh, 1988, uh, 26 in Chennai and several in other cities as well. This one happens to be number 72. We haven't given it obviously a place name because it's the first time it's being held online. So all the best to all of us. Thank you all for being here today from different parts of the world. I know we have people mostly from India, but also from uh, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and also places in UK and in USA as well. So welcome to all of you in whatever time zone you're in. Uh, Rishi, can we move on to the next slide, please? So, a uh, couple of uh, ground rules. So, if you're playing off a browser or even if you're playing off your phone, uh, just go to Google and type in kahoot.it. And once you do that, um, I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that if you haven't done it. So I guess you opened kahoot.it and then it's going to ask you uh, for a pin number. It'll ask you for a couple of things, including uh, uh, a nickname. So whatever nickname that you entered in, please uh, do that. We will be displaying the pin number on your Zoom screen in a second. So just be ready to do that. Okay, so this happens to be the Kahoot pin number 620047. Enter that number. It's also going to ask you for a nickname. So just put in a nickname and you'll see your name coming up on screen as well. Those of you who have not yet uh, entered the hood, please do so in the next 30 seconds. We'll be starting after that. Right, Rishi, we'll move on to the next slide. I think good to go. So welcome to the landmark quiz 2020. So please keep a watch on the Zoom screen as well as your Kahoot app on which you will need to answer the questions that you see on the Zoom screen. So once again, welcome to the Landmark Quiz 2020. This is Dr. Naveen Jayakumar, your quiz master. I've been doing this since 1988. And uh, this is my 62nd Landmark Quiz so far. Totally, we've done uh, 71. This is the 72nd Landmark Quiz till date. So welcome all of you and to a new platform, which is we are online for obvious reasons in the year 2020. Next slide, please. Yeah. So just to get you started off and familiarize yourself with your book, so just enter a number, what's your age? 
On the left side of your screen, you can see the timer counting down. On the right side, you can see the number of people who've been answering, and we can see a word cloud appearing. Right, so most of you are in your 20s, which is good. Landmark always strives, strives to be as young as possible, even though it's, the quiz is about 30 years plus now. Uh, so let's try one more question just to make yourself comfortable with it. Which city are you taking part from? It would be interesting to know since this is an online quiz as to where you're from. Wow, so we have a large contingent from Chennai, followed by Bangalore, Mumbai, Kolkata, Coimbatore, Gurban, other places in India as well. And we have representation from all parts of India, I think, and as, as well as a couple of places in the US as well. So welcome to all of you. So a couple of points. Uh, the questions follow certain formats. Sometimes they are multiple choice, where you just have to pick a colored box. Uh, sometimes uh, you will find it here. Here are the rules. There are 40 questions. Some of them are MCQs. Some of them are free text. So we'll, there'll be a box provided in which you can enter the text. Just a couple of things. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about capitalizations and small letters. So that part of it, you don't need to worry. But you do need to worry about spaces between words. If there are two words, in your answer, please make sure there's a space in between. Uh, we have tried to make some allowances for spelling mistakes and alternative spellings. Uh, there are no uh, negatives, so please take guesses. There is one other format in this uh, set of 40 questions, is uh, arranging the four options in a certain sequence or a correct sequence. For example, if I asked you to, uh, if I gave you red, blue, uh, yellow, and green, and ask you to arrange it in the, in the way a rainbow is arranged from top to down. So you'll have to arrange it that way. So on your uh, Kahoot answering app, you will see the four options uh, and you will see four empty boxes on top of it. So you can just drag the colored boxes into the empty boxes in the sequence that you think is correct. And once you answered, you finished arranging it, press the Kahoot K button below to submit your entry, okay? All uh, questions have a timer attached to it. So for multiple choice questions, we have given 30 seconds. For those which require arranging or typing in an answer, uh, we have given 60 seconds, okay? So uh, please do not Google uh, for answers. It's going to be a little difficult to Google also because many of the questions, most of the questions I think are uh, visual based and it's going to be a little difficult to Google. And the quiz master's decision will be final on all matters. On that note, let's move on uh, to the next slide. So here comes the first question of the Landmark Quiz 2020. The first two questions are about Landmark itself. So here it comes. In which city did Landmark's first store start. So you, you will see a box on your Kahoot app. Just type in the answer. Uh, 
Okay, so a lot of you have got the answer correct. Chennai and three people have written Madras, which is the right answer. It started in Madras and then in Bangalore and then uh, several other cities in India as well. So good for you. Uh, you will probably be seeing your scores at that point on your Kahoot app. And you, at the end of every question, you'll see this kind of a leaderboard uh, appearing. So you can keep a watch on your scores as well. All right. So let's move on to the next question about landmark. And uh, so this was the first landmark store, okay? What is the name of landmark's new concept store unveiled in August, 2020? You have four options there. You can pick the right option. What is the name of landmark's new concept store unveiled in August, 2020? Okay, so most of you have written Excite, a couple of you have written Rainbow, and the correct answer is Excite. And we have a small video for you about Excite. That's Landmark Excite for you. This is the new uh, Landmark store started in Mumbai uh, sometime around August uh, this year, which is one of the reasons why we couldn't do the Landmark quiz on August 15th because we were busy with this new particular store. There. So do visit the Landmark store, new Excite store if you're in Mumbai or if you're traveling to that city anytime in the future. Okay, Rishi, shall we move on to the next slide, please? Okay, the earliest anthropomorphic representations of the Buddha appear during the rule of which empire? The earliest anthropomorphic representations of the Buddha appear during the rule of which empire? You have four options there, Sunga, Kushan, Maurya, and Yavanarajya. couple of seconds left to go. Great. So most of you have mentioned Kushan and let's take a look. That is the right answer. Scores changing. So we'll take a look at the scores now and then. So that's the sequence in case you people want to know. You have the Nandas followed by the Mauryas, then the Sungas, then the Indo-Greek or the Yavana Rajas and then the Kushan Empire which is right there in the middle of the spice route. Uh, the spice route extended from the Han Empire in China all the way uh, across to the Roman Empire on, on the map 
on the right hand on the left hand side of the map and in between you had the kushans and the parthians and what was interesting this is an image of the goddess hariti uh, sometime around the 1st century uh, ad uh, in the kushan style what is interesting is she was one of the first plague goddesses uh, along with sheetala etc this was the time when there was a plague called the antonine plague which was a smallpox plague that swept uh, like a pandemic it swept across from china all the way into the roman empire and obviously the kushan business regions in between these two large empires were also affected and a quarter of the world's uh, a, a, the citizens of uh, the chinese empire and the roman empire died as a result of this plague and it's around this time that the first of the plague goddesses started appearing people used to pray to them and uh, this really had an impact i think this is a kind of a covid related question because it was a very globalized uh, commercial period in that time in the first century and it has uh, consequences even for us in the year 2020 lessons to learn so this is the first question the next question as you can see has got a ship on it so let's see what that is here it comes whose voyages are shown on the map here you can see a couple of dates he did a i think he did about four voyages is it cabral amerigo vespucci columbus or bartolomeu dias And let's see what you've said. A lot of you have said Amerigo Vespucci, which happens to be the right answer. All right, so the leaderboard keeps changing quite frequently, so don't worry too much about it. This is only the third question. So this is the famous map by the cartographer Martin Wolsey-Muller, which for the first time recognized the continent, the New World continent, and named it after Amerigo Vespucci as America. So this is the first time the word America appears on the world map. What is interesting is Amerigo Vespucci's trip down the coast of South America in the year 1501 to 1503. That was one of his last voyages. And it was at that time when he was passing by the coast of South America that he realized that the geography and the kind of people whom he was seeing alongside the coast did not match known reports about the Indies and Asia and India in particular. And this was when he recognized that it was a new uh, landmass altogether and not the Indies. And in a letter to Medi Lorenzo Medici, who was his patron, he had described this as Nuovo Mundo or the new world. And it is in recognition of Vespucci's contribution that this was not Asia or India, that the landmass was now known as America. So this is Martin Wolsey Muller's map. So a little bit of fun facts about Amerigo Vespucci. The next one looks like a circuit diagram. Let's see what that is. Science. Name this German electrical engineer and industrialist, it's seven letters, whose reciprocal is another German physicist. So all you need to do is to type your answers in there. Who is this electrical engineer and industrialist whom you're seeing here? He has given his name to a unit, and that unit is a reciprocal of another unit, which is named after another German physicist. And there is a Greek letter for you to work it out as well. So we need to mute someone there. Yeah, thank you. Couple of seconds left. Let's see all the answers that have been put up. A lot of interesting answers. Austed is a good guess. But the correct answer is Siemens, after whom the company is named, Siemens. So Siemens is the SI unit 
uh, of, can we have the next slide please, uh, Rishi? Okay. So Siemens is the unit of electrical conductance. It's the opposite, is a reciprocal of the ohm, which is what I'd mentioned. Ohm was another German physicist as well. The archaic term for Siemens, since it was a reciprocal of ohm, it used to be represented as an inverted omega letter, and it used to be known as the Mo, which is the reverse of OHM. Okay, and nowadays, of course, we call it the Siemens. Okay, the next one is arrange. So you'll have to arrange four places that all of you might be familiar with. And you can see the little logo there that might tell you which four places these are. So take a look. Here comes the puzzle. Arrange these locations in order of play in a popular board game. Starting from Go, if you played Monopoly, which place would you come across first, next, third, and the last? This is obviously the original, I mean, this is the British version of Monopoly with which we are most familiar with. So once you've made the arrangement on your Kahoot answer, just press the K to submit your answer. Okay, we are done with that. Oh, well done. A lot of you have got it right. So that is the order of sequence and Bharati moves up there to first position right now. So the first property that you come across is Old Kent Road and then across it on the other side you have Trafalgar Square. And then the green ones are Oxford Street, Bond Street and Regent Street. And the most expensive ones are Park Lane ending in Mayfair. So that is a little bit about Monopoly. The next one is a bowler hat, something to do with literature. Okay, here comes the question on books and literature. I.D. the writer, photograph will be shown, whose citizenship was restored in 2019 after more than 40 years in exile. In 2020, he won the prize that you see there, that's the prize, named after his fellow countrymen. Your four options there, Mikhail Bulgakov, Bohumil Rabal, Milan Kundera, and Ismail Kadari. So most of you have mentioned the answer as Milan Kundera, which happens to be the correct answer. Well done. some small change happening there on the leaderboards. So, in fact, this happens to be the Kafka statue in Prague. It's a reference to his uh, story description of his struggle. So that's Kafka sitting on someone carrying him without any body, there's just an empty suit. Uh, so this is the statue and this prize is known as the Kafka prize, which was awarded to Milan Kundera. The bowler hat is very typical as an important prop in his uh, book, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. The next question is from movies. So let's see what that question is. It's again a puzzle. You have to arrange these quotations from famous movies. This is from the top 10 in AFI's uh, 100 greatest American movies of all time. So in chronological order, can you put these films in chronological sequence? Take your time, read the quotes. The visual also shows you some posters associated with the films. We have about 10 seconds left.
Well done. So the first one is we'll go to the answers. Let me show you that. So here is the answer. The very first one is from Citizen Kane, which is Rosebud, which came out in 1941. I shall be in Aqaba. Uh, it is written is the famous line from Lawrence of Arabia, which came out in 1962. Revenge is a dish best served cold is from The Godfather, which was in 1973, if I'm not mistaken, not 1972. And the last one, whoever saves a life saves the world entire, is from the 1993 hit Schindler's List. Good. So I think most of you got that right. The next one is a cryptic icon there that you see. So let's see what that is. I want you to name, give me the surname of a certain lady. The two images are possible inspirations behind the global identity of which lady. I just need her last name, six letters. You can see a uh, detail from a stained glass window on your right. And something similar seen on the image on the left. This is from a, both these are from France. You have these intertwining images there that you can see. These are inspirations being the global identity of which lady. I just need her last name. Let's see what you have written. Time is up. Okay, so a lot of various answers, including Angela Merkel, etc. But 43 of you have read Coco Chanel, and it is the Chanel logo which was inspired by these two images. Let's see what's happening there. So here it is. Those are the intertwining seas of Coco Chanel and that formed the, that is the origin of the logo of Chanel. Okay, the next one looks like another interesting icon. I think you can figure out what that is. So there are two words so don't forget to put a space in between your answers so what is this hindu slash buddhist religious symbol on your left is five letters put a space and give me a three letter acronym on a prestigious indian object on which it is depicted there's a hint there till date families of only 21 indians possess this prestigious object it's a three letter acronym so put the five letter word, give a space, and then put this three letter acronym. All right, so time is up. A lot of you have answered interesting ones. So most of you have got it. I think 30, not too many have got it, right? This is Indra's Vajra or the Thunderbolt. And it is the image that is depicted on the Paramvir Chakra. Okay, so that's Indra's Thunderbolt or the Vajra. That is the name. Vajra is depicted on the Paramvir Chakra. You can see the Vajra there on the PVC. And these are the 21 recipients of the highest decoration to the army and the armed forces in our country. These are the 21 people. Next question has an interesting looking building and probably the question is about where is this building, which city? Let's see the question first. In which capital city would one find this street and statue? So the street's name and the statue are very familiar to all of you. In which capital city would one find this street and statue? I've given you some coordinates there to help you.
So it says Shastri, for those of you who can't see, it says Shastri Street. So this is 69 degrees east longitude. Just to tell you that uh, Chennai is around 80 degrees east longitude. So think where 69 degrees would be. Okay, time is out and let's see how many of you got that right. Well done, a lot of you have written Tashkent. This is in Tashkent. Next slide, please. And let me tell you a little bit about that. I think most of you may remember that Lal Bahadur Shastri uh, went in 1966 to sign uh, an India-Pakistan Tashkent Declaration uh, to resolve the 1965 war. That is Shastri with the Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan, Ayub Khan, and the Premier of the Soviet Union, which is Alexei Kosygin. Uh, it was signed on January 10th, and that night Shastri passed away uh, under mysterious circumstances and a lot of conspiracy theories about that. And the lower photograph shows uh, Kosygin and uh, Ayub Khan uh, carrying uh, Shastri's coffin. Right, the next question is about a river, what looks like a river, so let's see what that is. So you have to type an answer and give me the name of a city on the Mississippi River that was named after an ancient civilization's capital on the banks of another great river. I have some visual clues for you which will slowly be appearing. It will reveal itself over time. If you can work out the city's name without the help of the pictures, good for you. Good to see a lot of you answering this. We have about 10 seconds left. The image on the left is a famous incident which took place in that city. The image on the right is the ancient civilization's capital in another continent altogether. Okay, so let's see how many of you have got that right. Not too many, around 38 have said Memphis which is the correct answer. Right, so Memphis was named, Memphis on the banks of the Mississippi, which is the picture on the top, was named by Andrew Jackson, uh, who was the president, who became president of the United States later. And he wanted to name this city on the banks of the Mississippi uh, to compare it favorably with another famous city on the banks of another great river, which is the Nile. And so he called it Memphis, which is one of the old capitals of the Egyptian civilization. And oddly enough, the modern day Memphis in, uh, in, in Tennessee also has this pyramidal building, which was a uh, convention center and now I think is some kind of a department store there. So that's the pyramid of the modern Memphis as well. Okay, so the next one looks like a fish and the fish has started to walk. So it's something to do with, obviously, you know who. Let's see. Science question coming up. Darwin's study of which Galapagos birds first sparked his theory of evolution through natural selection. Look at the picture carefully. It will help you. So which birds did Darwin study first? which sparked his evolution theory through natural selection. And these birds were found on the Galapagos Islands. So those are two pictures of the birds. So a lot of you have mentioned finches, which is unfortunately not the right answer of source. The correct answer is mockingbirds. So he did study the finches that happened later. But the birds that he studied, can we go to the next slide, please? The birds that he studied, which first led him to the, on the path of natural selection, the idea of natural selection 
were, were the mockingbirds. So he first studied the mockingbirds at Cristobal Island in, in the Galapagos and found they were rather similar to the American, the North American mockingbirds. But those on the Floriana Island, which was neighboring island in the Galapagos Islands, were quite different from the ones found on Cristobal, and he was wondering why. And that's when the seed of this idea that there is evolution by natural selection started. The famous finches, of course, came a little while later. Okay, so that was a little bit of a trick question. Most of you associate uh, Darwin with that very famous uh, drawing of the four finches in the different Galapagos Islands. But these are the mockingbirds, the image that you see there, are the mockingbirds uh, collected by Darwin on his, uh, the famous Beagle uh, expedition. Right, the next one is obviously sports, as you can see. All right, you see pairs of cities, so pick the correct one. Which pairs of cities started the norm of hosting both the Olympics and the Paralympic Games in the same year? The summer, winter, I've given options there, you can take a look. Big clues there in the visual. Earlier, the Olympics and the Paralympic Games used to be held in different cities. Uh, but starting in, in a certain year for each summer and winter Olympics, they were held at the same city. That was a deal which was signed, an agreement which was signed. A lot of you have mentioned uh, Barcelona and Sarajevo. Uh, I thought the clue was the S made the ribbon by the tiger. It is Seoul and Albertville. And uh, some change in the scores happening there. So here is that list which happened. I just put it together for you. As you can see, uh, in 1980, the Summer Olympics was in Moscow, but the Paralympic Games were in Arnhem. And it was in 1988 at Seoul that the Olympic and the Paralympic Games uh, are held by convention in the same city. So the city which bids for the summer games has to naturally also uh, take care of the Paralympic Games correspondingly. Similarly, for the Olympic uh, and the Paralympic Winter Games, it was in 1992 at Albertville uh, in France. And from that, the convention started. What's interesting also is after that, you can see that the, the summer games and the winter games started separating by two years in between. So you have 94 Winter Olympics and then 96 Summer Olympics, 98 Winter Olympics, etc. etc. So that was a little bit about Olympics. The next one is about Sri Shakti, I think, women's power. Let's see. I hope I've not let out something. What is the missing word in this 2019 government initiative for female entrepreneurs? The word came from this 2012 film. So type in one word, it is a made up word, like you have the word Gandhi Giri from Lagerao Munna Bhai, like that. This film, which came out in two parts, coined a certain word, which is the name of this 2019 government initiative for female entrepreneurs. Okay, time is up. This was a little difficult question. Either you know it or you don't know it. Vase Puri is a good guess. Sri Shakti, which is what I blurted out, but it is not. But some of you got it right. Not too many. Womania is what I was looking for. So Womania is the right answer. There is the song in the film, like uh, Gangs of Vasepur, called O Womania. And that gave its name to this uh, government of India enterprise good so that's bollywood done for you now we have something on dance let's take a look at the couple of visuals that follow which character is being portrayed by these dancers it's the same character the visual the black and white visual on the right happens to be vaijanti mala
30 seconds and your time is over. 100, you have said Andal, which is the right answer. Well done. Let's take a look at the scores right now. So leading in place is Jaunty Rose. Good. Bharati has just slipped down. GK, Sonde, GK and BB are leading in the top uh, five. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. So Andal was one of the Alvars, the Vaishnavite saints of Tamil Nadu. And the Srivali Putur temple uh, is an Andal temple. And she was the one who was very much uh, devoted to the god as Srirangam, which is the pose that you saw. So the kind of headdress and the open garland that you see is very typical of Andal. So the next one, obviously, you know what letter that is. D for Disney. Let's move on to the next slide. So you're going to see four characters from the same one particular Disney animated film. I want you to give me the last name, okay? If you read the names of these four characters very quickly, you'll get someone's full name, okay? Appropriately. I want you to give me that person's last name alone. Entering his full name, there's no space. So just give me his last name. If you read the names of these four Disney characters very quickly, it will sound like someone's name. Whose name is that? I just want you to give me his last name. So this happens to be from the film Frozen. So if that is a clue, you have five seconds in which to type out a last name. Okay, we have 148 answers submitted. Someone's written Modi, someone's written Clueless, Scooby-Doo. And many of you have written Anderson, which is the correct answer. Let's take a look at the answer. So they, there's this very nice, interesting Easter egg in the film. The names of these characters in order are Hans, Christoph, Anna, and Sven. So if you read it quickly, they all stand for Hans Christian Andersen. And Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Snow Queen, was the basis for the film Frozen. So this was a kind of a tongue-in-cheek tribute to Hans Andersen. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next one is on festivals of India. And it is a puzzle. So you have to arrange these festivals of India in the correct chronological order in which they appear in the calendar year, which is January to December. Okay, here are some pictures to help you and the names are below. I haven't given you the actual names of the festival. You'll have to work that out for yourself. So take a look at these names and the pictures and try and see if you can arrange them in the right sequence. You have Sindur Khala, Chundan Vallam, King Momo, and Creation of Khalsa. Okay, you've timed out. Oh, well done. A lot of you have got that correct. So this, this is the order. Uh, let's take a look at the answer slide. So the first one is, is King Momo is the head of the, the, the title or head of the Goa Carnival. So someone's nominated the king of the festivities. So that's the carnival which happens in February. In mid-April, we have the Sikh festival of Baisakhi, followed by uh, Mid-September, you have the Aranmula boat race in Kerala, celebrated during Onam. And you have the snake boats, which are called as Chundan Vallams. And of course, in October, you have coming up soon is Durga Puja. And one of the important festivities which takes place during Durga Puja is this uh, event called the Sindur Khala. Right. So next one, you see uh, a black and white. One of those symbols for apartheid. So 
What two words are blanked out in this award-winning documentary subtitle about a court-like body set up in 1996? So the title of this documentary is called Long Night's Journey Into Day. It says South Africa's search for blank and blank. So two words I want. The first word is five letters. The second word is 14 letters. Please type in only these two words with a space in between. Please don't write and and put a symbol for and and all that. Otherwise, your answer won't be recognized. Just two words alone with a space in between. A couple of seconds left. All right, so I think most of you might have got that right. So we're looking at truth and reconciliation. Uh, this was the famous Truth and Reconciliation Commission, uh, which was set up in 1996 in South Africa at the end of the apartheid. Can we have the answers, please, Rishi? So this is based on the principle that it's not good to seek retribution, punishment uh, for what happened in the past, which is what was done in the Nuremberg trial, trials. So that's one form of justice is known as retributive justice. The other kind is some kind of a reconciliation to take place and it worked out very well in South Africa. Um, and it has been tried in other places. Uh, in fact, Chile had it and I think Canada also they had a truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, so this was the first meeting which took place in London uh, with Desmond Tutu there. This principle of justice is known as restorative justice. So that was the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. For those of you who are interested in literature, the title of Eugene O'Neill's play is Long Day's Journey into Night. And that was reversed to make the title of this documentary called Long Night's Journey into Day. So that's a little bit of a fun fact for you. The next one you can see CH4 in the cloud. So let's see what that's about. So it looks like methane and must be something about the environment. So which of these is not among the causes of a rapid surge of methane emissions since 2007? Your four options, rice fields, fracking, wetlands and cattle. Which of these is not among the causes of the rapid surge of methane emissions since 2007? All right, so a lot of you have written uh, wetlands, but the correct answer is fracking, which 51 of you have got correct. Well done. So let me explain that to you. So actually, although fracking does increase methane levels in the atmosphere, the recent surge over the past 13 years or so has been due to uh, microbial uh, causes of methane production. Uh, which includes uh, paddy fields, it includes uh, uh, wetlands, and also, strangely enough, uh, cattle which produce uh, methane inside the gastrointestinal system. So, in fact, a lot of interesting things are being done to try and reduce the methane content inside the cow's stomach. Uh, one of these include a, a kind of a, a seaweed which apparently absorbs uh, uh, methane and reduces the methane output by the cows, uh, mostly by burping, but some of the cows, of course, the methane comes up through the other end. So for those of you interested in such trivia, good for you. Uh, the next one is a fighter plane and it happens to be a MiG fighter plane. So let's see what that's about. Alloys of which element combined with aluminum were first used during the Cold War to make MiG fighter planes? The visual is a big clue. The visual is a big clue. Alloys of which element combined with aluminum were first used during the Cold War to make MiG fighter planes?
Take a look at these five flags. They look kind of similar. They're all part of a certain region in the world. So that gives you a big clue about what element this is. So try and work it out from this picture. Okay. So I suspect a lot of you have got the country correct. It is not Nordium, good guess, but it happens to be Scandium. About a third of you got that answer correct. Well done. So this element uh, was uh, discovered. Can you have the answers, please, uh, Rishi? Can you move on? Okay, so this is Scandium, element number 21. It was discovered by the Swedish chemist, Lars Nilsson. It's used in aerospace industry because it is light, it has a high melting point, and it is also very, very strong. And that's why it's combined with aluminum, which has similar properties as well. And because Lars Nilsson was from Sweden, which is part of Scandinavia, those are the flags of Scandinavia, the countries comprising Scandinavia. And that's why he called it Scandium. Okay. This happens to be the halfway point in our quiz. We move on to the second half of the quiz. Coming up next is question number 22. All right. After whom, you'll see a picture on the right. After whom is this aggressive field arrangement named? After whom is this aggressive field arrangement named? You see that very intimidating lineup, the entire fielding team is lined up behind the batsman, except for the bowler in front of him. You have four options there. Okay, so this was another of our sports questions. 49 of you said comedy, 55 of you said Keith Miller. It happens to be Keith Comedy. Uh, let's take a look at the scores at the moment. So in top position, John T. Rhodes is still holding on to his top position at halfway point of the quiz. Bharati, 23 is second. Rajiv Rai, third. Sumanth, S, fourth. And G. Krishnamurti, I think. That's what GK stands for in the fifth position. Let's take a look at the answer before we move on. So this very aggressive uh, field position is known as the comedy field or, or the umbrella field. Uh, this was first used uh, in a match in New South Wales. And the other names there are, are also included in those options. In 1953, Lindsay Hassett became the first international captain to use in a test match when he arranged such a field for Ray Lindwall and Keith Miller against England. So, a bit of cricket trivia for you there. We move on to the world of books on the next question. And here it comes. So you have to type an answer, which book won the 2020 Women's Prize for Fiction? It is a one letter difference from this tragic figure, which you see in the black and white photograph on the right. So look at that tragic character from the black and white photograph. It's a very famous character in a play. The answer I'm looking for is a one letter difference from the name of this character. And that's the name of the book which won the 2020 Woman's Prize for Fiction. Okay, so here goes a lot of options Hamlet, Macbeth, etc. But it you have said Hamnet, which is the right answer. Well done. I'll tell you a little bit about Hamnet. I, uh, for those of you who don't know, Hamnet was the only son of William Shakespeare. He had two daughters named Judith and Susanna. 
uh, in around 1596 uh, or so, there was a plague in England and Judith fell very ill. Uh, luckily, she recovered, but unfortunately, Hamnet, Shakespeare's only son, was also infected and he subsequently died. And very shortly after that, in uh, 1599, Shakespeare wrote the play Hamlet. Okay, so the two names are, there's a lot of speculation about whether Hamlet is named after Hamnet. But apparently, uh, in those days, uh, Hamnet and Hamlet were kind of interchangeable. So this is the tragic tale of uh, Shakespeare's uh, only son who died of the plague. And the book is based not only about his son, but uh, very interestingly, uh, from a woman's point of view, on Shakespeare's wife and uh, also known as Agnes um, Shakespeare, who, who was an extremely, extremely strong woman. And so uh, it's an interesting read. I'd encourage you all to take a look at this book. The next question coming up on art. So let's see what that is. Which three cities are depicted in this 2008 triptych by Emmet Hussain as part of his Indian civilization series? Take a good look at those pictures and you'll see triads of cities which I've listed. Pick the right one in sequence. Right, Delhi, Varanasi, Kolkata, say 89 of you and 89 of you are absolutely correct. Let's move on. So M.F. Hussain, this is one of his last big series done. Um, and it was a set of paintings started, of course, he started with Ganesha, a painting of Ganesha. And then he did a triptych on three dynasties, language of stone, traditional Indian festivals, Indian households, modes of transport, Tale of Three Cities, Indian Dance Forms, and finally, the Hindu triad of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. That was one of his last uh, commissions by the Mittal family. Uh, the next one is a very interesting visual. Take a good look at the little black and white logo there. It will help you. These floral and trifoil motifs that I will show you are typical of fabric of which community? The trifoil pattern, that is a the three leaf pattern is also seen in an ancient cultural artifact from that community's land. That region. By land, I mean region. The blue color is very, very typical of this fabric. So, which community would you associate this fabric with? So, again, Answers are evenly split between Sindhi and Pashtun. Good guess. So Sindhi happens to be the right answer. Can we move on? So this fabric is known as Ajrak. It belongs to the Sindhi community. And Ajrak means blue. And you can see the same trefoil pattern in this priest king of the Harappan civilization of the Indus Valley. As all of you know, the Indus Valley civilization, the area is Sindh. And that, I hope, would have given you the clue. So for those of you who got that right, good for you. Uh, so this fabric is called Ajrak. Uh, next question, obviously, we can't be without the coronavirus. Let's see what the question is, however. Which letter inserted in the word shown on the next slide gives the name of a May 2020 pair of conspiracy theory videos? You have to insert one of these letters somewhere in this word, pandemic, and you'll get this debunked conspiracy theory which says that this was a deliberately manipulated virus. So I am emphasizing the word deliberately. Okay. Think of the word deliberately and put in a letter somewhere in this word which might give you the name of this video. A lot of you have said L, and L happens to be the right answer. Let's see where the L fits in. Okay, so the movie was called, these videos were called Plandemic. Okay, so uh, that was uh, 
the name of the conspiracy theory videos. Couple of them came out in May. So interesting. Below you can take a look and read those. Those are the uh, seven hallmarks of conspiracy theorists. Okay, uh, conveniently fitted into the acronym conspire. So that's something interesting for you. On that theme from America, let's move on to the elections. While Trump is the 45th US president, he is only the 44th person in that position. Now, this is a peculiarity which is caused by this person. Who is this person? Right, I'm sure a lot of you have got that right. So 85 of you said Grover Cleveland, which happens to be the right answer. So Grover Cleveland, uh, let's see the slides. So Grover Cleveland uh, was defeated by Benjamin Harrison and he was the president. He was defeated by Benjamin Harrison uh, who became the next president. But then Grover Cleveland stood again for elections and won. He defeated Benjamin Harrison. So he became the fourth. 24th and the 26th president of the United States of America. That's why uh, you have a discrepancy between the number of the president and the actual people who held that job because Grover Cleveland held it on two different occasions, interrupted by another president. So, okay, the next one is somewhere in the world, geography, travel. I would emphasize to you to take a good look at the photograph that you see that will help you in identifying the last name of the person on the right whose lasting memorial of sorts is this particular place. Do take a look at the picture that will give you a big clue. It says there no walking climbers climb closed due to permanent closure 26th of October 2019. Lots of interesting answers, including Samuel Morse and Rushmore, which is a good guess. It happens to be Ayers of the Ayers Rock in Australia. Uh, the rock, of course, is now known by the Aboriginal native name of Uluru. Uh, Vishi, can we move on? And it was named after this administrative officer by name Ayers. And due to sentiments expressed by the Aboriginal people uh, of Australia, uh, people are not supposed to, no longer allowed to climb on this very sacred rock. Uh, earlier known as Ayers Rock, of course, now known as Uluru. Very dramatic photographs there on the top. That was the uh, 27th question of the Landmark Quiz 2020. We are moving on to question 28. This is a puzzle. Sorry, question 29. Arrange these human bones in order from top to bottom in the skeleton based on their location. So which bones would you see on top? Which bones would you see below? The images are there. The text is below in the boxes. On the right, those three small bones are called malleus, incus, and stapes. They all have very interesting shapes. So try and think of the skeleton and see where these would fit in. So this is a biology question.
Now, this was not too easy, as I can see. So right on the top, we have the ear ossicles. That is, these are the three bones in the middle ear. They are the smallest bones in the human body. And the little one shaped like a stirrup is called stapes. That is the smallest bone in the human body. That's number one. Number two is in front of your chest, which is the sternum or the breastbone. Number three comes the femur or the thigh bone, which happens to be the longest bone in the body. And number four is a freestanding bone. It's not attached to some other bone. It's freestanding. It's part of the ligament uh, on, your, on your knee joint. And that's the kneecap or the patella. So that's the order in which they happen. So for those of you who are shuddering from that onslaught of biology and the skeleton, let's move on to something friendly like a football. This happens to be question 30 of our quiz. With which soccer player would you associate these images? The first two images refer to his nickname. The last image, of course, is very, very interesting. Good, so a lot of you have said Zamorano, uh, 66 of you, which happens to be the correct answer. So before I go on to the answer, this was the 30th question. Let's see the scores right now. The leaderboard says John T. Rhodes still holding on to his position or her position as the case may be. Sumanth moving on to second place, Bharati on third, Rajiv Rai on fourth and GK on fifth. Those are the top five. Let's move on to the answer. So this happens to be Ivan Zamorano from Chile, who used to play for Inter Milan in 1996 to 2000. Uh, his nicknames are Bam Bam and because of his name Ivan, he's known as Ivan the Terrible. His jersey is very interesting. Initially, he had a number 9 jersey and Ronaldo had number 10 jersey. But when Roberto Baggio joined the team, Baggio was given number 10, so Ronaldo took 9. And Zamorano had to give up his 9, but he used number 18 with a plus in between. So he made it 18 plus uh, 1, um, which made it uh, 1 plus 8, which made it 9. So he kind of retained his number 9 position. So that was about Zamorano. The next one is a story from the Panchatantra about a little girl and a mouse. So there is the story about a holy man who came across a mouse. Uh, and he converted her into a little girl. And when she grew up, he wanted to marry her to various powerful beings like the sun and the, and the cloud and the mountain. But eventually, she preferred to marry just a mouse. And he converted her back to a mouse again. So there are two words missing in the English title here. They're both four letters. They both start with the letter M. And they both sound the same, except that they have different meanings. So put in those two words, four letter words with a space in between. They sound the same, but they have a different meaning. Think about it. Time is out. This might have been a little more difficult question, I think. Mini Muni, good, good, interesting answers, but it happens to be made and made. A lot of people have given it the other way around, but it doesn't matter. We're giving you points for that, that as well. Okay, so here is the answer. It's mouse made, made mouse. Okay, this is a very familiar theme, apparently, called the chain of spouses stories, found in different versions all over the world with more or less the same story that the sun is not really powerful because the cloud covers it. The cloud is not really powerful because it's moved by the wind. The wind is not as powerful as a mountain because it can be blocked by the mountain. But the small mice dig little tunnels in the mountain, so they happen to be the strongest of them all. So that is the synopsis of this particular story in the Pachatantra. Coming up, next question number 32 is on movies. So you're going to see stills from two famous films of the Indian parallel cinema movement. 
they share a historical event. They are based on the same historical event, which forms the backdrop of these two famous films. The years are given, so take a good look at it. One is 1973, the other is 1982. That might help you to eliminate one possibility from this. Right, so 112 of you have said Bengal famine, which is absolutely right. Nine of you have said uh, the emergency, which couldn't have happened in 1973 when the film was made. Next slide, please. Right, so John T. Rhodes holding on to his position there. So this is the Bengal famine of 1943. The two films were Akale, uh, uh, first one was Ashani Shanket by Satyajit Ray, and the second one is Akale Shondhane by Mrinal Sen. Uh, both of them about the Bengal famine, which was created literally man-made famine created by Churchill because he diverted all the food for the armed forces. Uh, Churchill notoriously was believed to have said when people asked him to help them with the food, he said they really can't be that hungry after all Gandhi has not yet died. So that infamous quote was apparently mentioned by Churchill relating to the Bengal famine of 1943. The next one is an interesting visual. It will probably help you with the answer. Okay, coming up next. Pop culture. What is the two-word alliterative name of this iconic 2004 photograph where the word alliterative means both the words start with the same letter? So I've given you a hint for the two words. One, the first word refers to an iconic 20th century commercial. And the second word refers to a branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. About 30 seconds left for you to try. This happens to be question number 33 of our quiz. Fifteen seconds left. Good, we have 155 people who tried this. Okay, smoking seals is a good guess, very nice. But the correct answer happens to be the Marlboro Marine uh, and variations of that is fine. Uh, can we have the answer please? So this happens to be the Marine Lance Corporal James Blake Miller, who was photographed on a rooftop after the attack, during the attack on Fallujah in 2004 by uh, this LA Times photojournalist who was embedded in that uh, group, uh, Louis Sinko. Uh, he later on was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, James Miller, of course. Of course, the photograph with the Marine with a cigarette was very, very classically reminding people of the Marlboro Man, which uh, people in their 40s and above will remember very clearly as well. So that was a bit of pop culture and photography. We move on to something which looks like movies but actually isn't. It's actually about the 20th century. Iconic photographs in chronological order. Please arrange these. So while you're arranging that, I've been instructed to tell you that smoking is injurious to health. The reference to the previous question. Okay, I think not too difficult, I think, but 66% of you got that right. Well done. So in order, we have these events happening. 
So the first one was the end of World War II, 1945, where you had this famous sailor kissing the nurse in Times Square, then followed by the famous Apollo mission to the moon, and this brilliant photograph of the Earth rising rather than a moon rise, Earth rise, 1968, and of course the Tiananmen Square in 1989 with that lone tank man, uh, the individual standing in front of that convoy of tanks. And of course, in 1991, the biggest earthquake of them all, the Berlin Wall falling. Right, so that was question number 34. Coming up next is again pop culture, question 35. After which we look at the scores. There is a term coined by Dr. Esho describing the phenomenon of people wanting surgery to match their digital image. Okay, so it's not like they want to look like celebrities. They want to look like their selfies with filters on it. So what is the name of this phenomenon? Is it instaphilia, Disney disorder, Black Mirror syndrome, or Snapchat dysmorphia? Lot of you quick off the mark there. All right, so 97 of you have got that right. It is Snapchat dysmorphia. Instaphilia, I made up, and I see 40 of you fell into that trap. My apologies. So, okay, scores right now. John T. Rhodes still leading. Sumanth up in second place. Bharati in third place. Khasgi in fourth place. And GK in fifth place. All right, so five more questions left. Um, can we move on? Not five more, I think seven more questions left. Yes, there are 42 questions. So uh, this is about Snapchat dysmorphia. You can read about it. People want to look like their doctored selfies with all those filters and these patients don't need surgery. They actually need counseling and psychiatric care. Right, the next one looks like something from fashion. Type in the answer. What five letter suffix, I just want five letter suffix, connects a word coined in the book on the left that was inspired by a political party on the right? The last five letters, so that's the meaning of the word suffix. The political party on the right inspired a word associated with the modeling industry and they both share the same last five letters. What are those five letters in the suffix? Connecting a word coined in this book, the tragedy of supermodel Jia, inspired by a political party. Some have written Freed, Rams, Oscars. Nista is what I was looking for. Some of you misread it, what fashionista, but they're giving you points for that, no worries. So the answer is fashionista, which was coined based on the Sandinista revolution of 1979. So all of us have heard the word fashionista, but it actually comes, uh, the word originated for the first time in that book and is based on the word Sandinista. The next question looks something volcanic. Let's take a quick look at what that question is. What is the name of this geological formation in India? So you see the photograph of that formation and you see the geographic location of that formation. Good, so a lot of you have said Deccan traps, which happens to be the right answer. And so let's see what's happening to the scores. John T. Rhodes still leading and everyone maintaining. Raji Rai is back in the top five. Okay, and here is the answer. 
this happens to be uh, one of the situations there was a mass extinction of uh, life forms on earth uh, this led to a whole lot of basalt uh, in the entire area which is called the Deccan traps the word traps comes from the swedish word for stairs and there was this huge lava flow which is one of the largest longest lava flows ever to take place on earth uh, about 1500 kilometers across india going towards rajamundri towards the sea to the bay of bengal and this period resulted in what is known as the KTB extinction or the Cretaceous tertiary boundary extinction of life forms on Earth. And it's the only mass extinction associated with both impact, which is the Chicxulub, and the flood basalts, which is the Deccan traps. Right, so the next one is on science and tech. Let's see what that question is about. Very suggestive looking visual. What term best describes this emerging technology? The visual is very, very helpful. Right, so 124, a lot of you have got that right. It happens to be augmented reality or AR. And this was, uh, let's see the answer slide, Rishi. So this, the first device was created in 1968 by Ivan Sutherland. And it was known uh, very interestingly as the Sword of Democles. So that was the first augmented reality device. The second one was created by Tom Coddle for Boeing. Uh, to help the Boeing uh, employ, uh, workers to help in their uh, creating their uh, electrical circuit boards, etc. Instead of looking at large books and charts. So that was the time the word augmented reality was created in 1990. Good for you, those of you who got that. Little bit of fun facts for those of you who would like to read about augmented reality a little bit more. The next one is from mythology. Some fascinating looking winged creature. The visual illustrates the origin of the name of which ruler of India. The word Iran air is there for, to help you to figure out what winged creature that is. So apart from that, it has no significance. So you can see the sun falling on this creature, which is creating a shadow of this bird on the ground. And it is falling on a certain ruler of India. Who is that ruler? We've given you a little extra time for this in case you need to work it out. Right, so 88 of you have got that right. It is Humayun. So this bird happens to be the Simurg, uh, commonly seen in the Persian mythology. It's also known as the Huma bird. And it is said that when, uh, who, whichever person the Huma bird's shadow falls upon, that person is destined to be the ruler or the king. And Babur therefore gave the name Humayun uh, to his son, because it is said that at that point in time, the shadow of the bird fell over the child. And that's how Humayun got his name. Uh, also, interestingly, a lot of uh, rulers of India had the figure of this bird uh, somewhere in their ornament. The feathers on their headdresses were representative of the Huma or the Simur. And Tipu Sultan, in fact, had this particular bejeweled uh, image of the Simur on top of his throne on a canopy so that he used to sit under it all the time, uh, confirming his royal authority, as it were. So that was about the Huma bird and a little interesting story about that, on how Humayun got his name. The next question, as you can see, is on cricket. And this time, it is a puzzle once again. And you're going to see images of four test cricket players who've captained India 
So please put them in chronological order. I've not mentioned their names, only their initials. So I'll leave it to you to work out who A, C, D, E, S, R, and M, R, R. Take your time, look at it. These women captained the Indian test team at different points in time. I've not given you their full names. I've just given you their initials. Please put them in order. The visuals are there, there for reference. Good. Excellent. So a lot of you got that right. And the scores, John T. Rose holding on to his position, but GK moving up to second place. Well done, GK. And here is the answer. So Shanta Rangaswamy was our first captain from 1976 to 84, followed by Diana Edilji till 1986, Anjum Chopra in 2002, and of course, till date from 2005, it has been Mitali Raj. Okay. The next question is on something very interestingly shaped. I won't tell you what it is, but you'll see a photograph of it. And just tell me what object is this? All right, 116 of you got that right. Well done. It is the Morsing, it's not the Kukri. Uh, so this is the 41st question. Oh, can we go back to the scores if possible? No, okay. So we missed the scores there. The, this, that was the second last question of this quiz. And uh, we have one more question to come up. So this is the Morsing or the instrument, the musical instrument Morsing. Uh, kukri, of course, is the, the Nepali knife. Miswak is, of course, the toothbrush, a native brush, which is used as a bark of wood, which is used as toothbrush in the Middle East. And, of course, the gladius is the sword which the gladiators used in ancient Rome. Uh, coming up next was a TCQ or a typical Chennai question, usually on someone who passed away recently. So no quiz would be complete without that. Here it comes. I want you to just type in one word which connects all these pictures. Type in one word. Three seconds left to the landmark quiz 2020 and time is up. I'm sure most of you would have got that right. Let's take a look. Justice, Ginsburg, America, a lot of possibilities. Uh, not too many got that right. The answer happens to be notorious. That's the singer is notorious big, B-I-G. And of course, notorious R-B-G is of course, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was named because of her dissenting famous dissenting uh, arguments in the Supreme Court. So it's a tribute to Ruth Bader Ginsburg who passed away this year. That brings us to the end of the quiz. Let's take a look at the scores. So I'd like to see the top three Rishi and as well as the top 10. So in third place, Khasgi. 
in second place gk and winning this quiz well done is john t rhodes so uh, archana could you uh, get them on screen as well and we'd like to interact with them congratulations to all of you i'd also like to uh, see the remaining uh, top 10 list let's see who else placed there thank you all i hope you enjoyed yourself so this year because it's difficult to monitor unlike a live event there are no monetary prizes for this quiz thank you all for coming here and just being part of this event just for the sheer fun of quizzing uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself, learned a lot of new things and new avenues to explore new things to read about uh, in this quiz. So here goes, uh, John T. Rhodes came first, GK came second, Sumanth came third, Kasgi came fourth, Rajiv Rai came fifth, Sunday came sixth, Bharati 23 came seventh, Ramesh N came ninth, Shubh 31 so Shub 31 came ninth, sorry. And one more. Can we see the 10th score? Abhinav Dhar came 10th. So well done, uh, all of you. But it would be great, uh, great to see uh, in third place, uh, Sumant S. Can we have Sumant S on screen, please? Hi, Sumant. How are you? Fine. How are you? All well. Yeah, all well. I'm actually back in Chennai now, so <laughs> not a bad start to back in Chennai. Good, back. Yeah. Good, good for you. How did you enjoy the quiz? Was it... it was good fun. I mean, I'm not used to the landmark quiz being a solo event. I mean, more than anything else, that's the part that seemed really unusual to me. Yes. But uh, yeah, I know. But strange times. Strange times, strange quizzing. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, I was just I was just telling a couple of others that there's a, there's a bit of a middle school vibe to the multiple choice aspect of it. Yes. But, but otherwise, very enjoyable. Really can't argue about this. This is as good as the experience. Yeah, I'm glad to see you enjoying that. In second place, we have G K, who's familiar to all of you as G Krishnamurti, uh, from a very interesting and wonderful set of people known as Quiz Dubai. Uh, all the way from the Middle East. Hi, welcome to the Landmark Quiz 2020, somewhere floating on a cloud around this planet. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have to say that uh, the Quiz Dubai people are past masters of this format yeah. on Kahoot. Uh, yeah. I think they have they've literally uh, supported the Kahoot uh, organization, yeah. I think, uh, single-handedly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. what are your thoughts about this quiz and the format? Yeah, yeah. So, I think it's a super exciting format. Uh, we had done this first in March. We just did it as a one-off. And then we did it every day uh, since then, and now twice a day. So I think that has really helped. I've been in good touch, uh, courtesy that. Quiz was good fun, Naveen. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the quiz. Always great to participate in Landmark. Thank you so much, Goat, and well done. And in first place is John T. Rhodes, if we can have him up on screen. Uh, could you please ask him to raise his hand? Could you uh, raise your hands, John T. Rhodes? We'd like to see who John T. Rhodes is. John T. Rhodes, are you there? Could you raise your hand uh, so that we can identify you and unmute you? Okay. Adarsha, are we able to find him? Okay, there's... Uh... Jay, Jay, Jay is the person, I think. Okay, I'm just going to do that. So good. I'd like to uh, thank everyone who took part in this quiz. I know it's a rather unusual situation and all of you are at home and the kind of questions have to be different as well. Not less of the how and the why, which is always very interesting in a quiz and more factual based and very focused answers. But of course, the interesting thing is for a lot of people who are watching this quiz is the very exciting timed format, I think, which, which makes it all the more fun for quiz enthusiasts. I think quizzers find the whole thing a bit of a strain, I'm sure. Uh, but thank you all for putting up with this. Uh, Adarsha, were you able to get uh, John T. Rhodes on screen? Uh, for some reason, it says fail to change role. Um, okay. I'm not able to 
promote them to a panelist okay uh, so i'm not sure who john t rhodes is do you know the identity of john t rhodes would you be able to is there an email or something like that uh no uh jake could you please put in your uh, information in the chat box or something so who came fourth why don't we have the person who came fourth up on screen fourth is uh, khasgi yeah khasgi yes aniket uh, that's him yeah aniket would you like to can we promote aniket also let's have a chat with aniket as well i think we are getting aniket is asking how do i get promoted so adarsha maybe you can help out yeah i am trying uh, rishi could you try from your end as well we can get aniket and we can get rajiv rai i think who came fifth i think j i think john t rhodes he joined Ah, Jay Kanthan. Well done, uh, Jay Kanthan, the winner of today's quiz. So, your comments about the kind of quizzing that you just encountered? Yeah, it was pretty much uh, like a like playing a fast-paced video game. That's what I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> it's an e-sport more than a quiz. It's an e-sport. Okay, I think that's a new avenue for quizzing to go on. God knows when the vaccine is coming. So, guys, be prepared for the long haul. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a long time before you're going to get the hows and why questions in quizzing. So you're going to get more of these factual things. But thank you so much for taking part. And Aniket, well done. Your comments about the questions and how you felt was it a bit too yeah. fast for you? No, no. I think the speed was quite fine. I, I really enjoyed the quiz. And <coughs> it's it is twelve thirty in the night at Sydney. So where are you? Really where are you from? I, I'm in Sydney. Oh Australia. wow! Okay, well done. So, so thanks for the Australia question, and thank you for this great quiz. It was really worth staying. I didn't put that thinking you'd be there, but uh, glad you could answer that. And I'm sure you'll get a lot of stones thrown at you if you didn't answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So thanks. This is very enjoyable. And Naveen, I really like the format of arranging questions, like arranging things in order. That was really great. Makes you think a lot. Glad, glad you like that. Glad you like that. And one more person is Rajiv Rai, who was uh, on top, uh, the top five. Rajiv, can we promote Rajiv Rai as well? Uh, all of you do remain on screen so that we can take one photograph, uh, screenshot of it also at the end of it. Hi, Rajiv. Hey, hi. So Rajiv is playing from uh, Mumbai. Uh, so this is an interesting. We have uh, one, two from uh, one from Mumbai, one from Chennai, two from Chennai, one from Dubai, and one from Australia. Uh, thank you, Rajiv. Your comments. You you are a veteran in quizzing. So let's hear how you've been managing with this kind of quiz. I think uh, I need to start all over now. This is a very different uh, idiom altogether. I mean. You have got clues all over the place. On the first slide comes seven letters. Second one, you have one clue. There was one teaser clue for the Indus Valley question. So this yeah. is not happening in the 30 to one minute, 30 seconds to one minute. So yeah, as uh, GK said, I think they had a head start in practice, etc. We need to do that in DPC so that next year we can win this. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad people picked up on those little clues and the next question and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there to make it a little more interesting. But, and uh, from the audience point of view, this is brilliant because this one hour quiz would have taken two and a half hours in a live setting. And, you know, people would have had to dedicate their whole day, go there and then sit. That way it's great. Of course, for us, it's a bit, you know, relearning, but it was great fun. Thank you all for taking funders, part. The main funders are coming when you're giving the answers. Right. So, yeah. I had to give in a little extra information as well so that all of you could drop a few fun facts as well. And yeah, I think you made an interesting point there. The hows and the whys just kind of have to take a back seat in this format. So yes. that's, so the that's only way I guess would probably fill that for us to figure out. Uh, the only way one could probably fill that in is by uh, putting it in the answer slide and giving some little yeah. information about it. That's the only way to do it. 
But thank you all and congratulations to all of you and all those who took part in today's quiz. Uh, uh, the, there are no monetary prizes here, but certificates, I think Landmark will be able to organize e-certificates for the top 10 uh, in today's top eight, or the top 10 in today's quiz. Uh, with those words, I hope uh, we will be back. We will be back, of course, no doubt about that in 2021 uh, for the 73rd edition of the Landmark Quiz uh, to take place anywhere, <laughs> counting all the cities together. Uh, is it going to be online or are we going to be uh, on stage in an auditorium somewhere near you? That's the big question. Fingers crossed. Good night and goodbye.